Today we're gonna talk about using algaecide on your pond and why I do not recommend it. Okay, I'm gonna start this off with side. C-I-D-E, it's a suffix. The suffix side means basically to kill something. It means death. Think about that for a second. Homicide, suicide, pesticides, algicide. It means death and I don't wanna put death in my pond. And I mean, I know I don't wanna go so extreme like Eric, you're freaking me out, but listen. Algae is not the, best, the, the, the worst thing. I don't build algae-free ponds. You're gonna have a little algae at times. It's gonna go through phases. It's really a trigger, and it lets you know what's going on in the pond. But I'll tell you this. If you have string algae, pro probably 95% of the phone calls I get about algae, they're either string algae or it's pea soup green algae, blanket algae, you know, green water algae. I mean, those are, that's, that's the, the, really the premise behind it all. So. I mean, if you're getting string algae, it's really mother's nature's way of trying to help you balance that pond. A little trigger to set something off. So I don't want you to freak out and try and just throw algicides in there to, to kill the algae because it's really not environmentally friendly and we're promoting uh, repurposing of your pond water if you're doing water changes or backwashes or spring clean outs fall preparations. I don't care what you're doing in the pond. When you take water out of that pond, I want you to put it in the landscape. I want you to water your vegetables. I want you to water your fruit trees. And I don't want to be eating fruit or vegetables from, you know, water that has algicide in there or, or pesticide or death. You see what I'm saying? We want to stick to nature. We want to use beneficial bacteria, and we want to use, you know, natural products, barley straw extract, things like that that you can put into the pond that, you know, you can put in your coffee in the morning. We don't, I'm not putting algicides in my coffee. I'm not putting beneficial bacteria or barley in there either. That's not the point. I could if I wanted to. Um, let me tell you this. You probably have a problem. Either you're overfed, you're overstocked or underfiltered. Probably gonna come down to those two, three strings. Oh, let's add one more. You might be under maintained. Maybe you're, you maybe have everything perfect, but you're maintaining the pond incorrectly, and that's why you're seeing the signs. It's just a trigger. So, you know, call a koi expert so you can, or your, or your local fish expert so you can figure out what to do. You know, are you gonna add filtration? Are you gonna reduce some fish? Are you gonna change your diet on the pond? Or are you gonna do your maintenance? Those are the things you have to think about. I do want to, um, I don't want to take a, a little backspin here because if you have a brand new pond and you have all the fancy filtration and everything's good and you're seeing signs that say string algae and so forth, uh, it could be just a cycling, a cycling thing. You know, new ponds will go through some of these phases. You can do an ecosystem pond that will be crystal clear without UV filters, but sometimes it'll go through a green water cycle. You see, but it's like Mother's Nature's way, fixing it, fixing it, and then it pops it crystal clear and then you can move on from there. If um, if you have a, a dedicated koi pond, a beginning, a brand new pond, it will need that UV to keep the water from turning green. But I can tell you, I know some ponds that are say, five, six, seven, ten years old, they're dedicated koi ponds. There's, the UV bulb is old and not working anymore, but the water is still crystal clear because the pond became you know, super balanced and the biofilter is big enough to help keep the water clear and the UV is not even, the, the bulb is old, not working. Not that I recommend not using the bulb, I'm just saying that it's that new pond syndrome, it's that balance. I wanna tell you a story about um, string algae and, and how this works too, because a lot of times you'll have a client spend like their last dollar getting that pond in the ground, and you know, it, it, it takes a lot of money to put that pond in the ground, and by the time you end with it, you're exhausted, your pocketbook's hurting because you got the pond in the ground, and then you don't have much money left for koi. When you're building your pond to begin with, you might leave a little budget in there for koi because adding the fish in there, adding the right size fish in the pond, makes a big difference in helping manage the algae in the pond too, believe it or not. And the story comes back to one of my clients. I, I built her a pond, and the pond was about a year old, and they, they just they didn't have any fish in there hardly, they just had a couple of small fish, they didn't feed them very much, and so literally the fish were little tiny things in there, and 
and she was having a string algae problem. And I said, you just don't have the right size koi. Why don't you come down here, get me some, get some fish that are about 16 inches. Or you have to hurry up and feed these fish and get them up bigger. You know, it's going to take a little time. Anyways, I was encouraging her to get bigger fish. I said, they're going to help manage the string algae. They're going to be eating it off the sides. They're going to be, you know, stirring things up and sending it to the skimmer and getting the filters working right. And they just didn't want to spend the money on the fish. And it got problematic for me because she called me so much and she was upset all the time. And I was like, just, you're not doing what I'm telling you to, so how can I help you if you're not listening to the advice that I'm getting, giving to you? She was worried about spending the money on the fish and having them die, and it's a waste of money. So this is what I did. One day, I went over to her place, and I put five big koi fish in her pond. I knew it would take care of her string algae. I put them in the pond. I didn't even tell her. I snuck into her yard, added the fish to her pond, and they were quarantined, I might add you. And I went home and I was just waiting for a phone call. She calls me, she was upstairs in the window and she was looking down at her pond and she called me freaked out. And she said, I looked out the window and I see these fish running around and they were yanking string algae off the walls and swimming around the pond with string algae in their mouth and they were eating it. And she was laughing and she was all exhilarated. It was just, it was really a funny moment for me in my career. And she's like, oh my God, the fish are so cool, you know? And I said, well, as soon as they're done eating your string algae, I'm gonna come in and get them and I'm bring them home. And she went, what, you're gonna take my fish? And I said, well, you can pay me for them. Look it, let them finish eating the algae. Let me prove to you that they're gonna take care of your problem and her situation. And you can either pay me for the fish or I'll come and get them. She ended up paying me for the fish and the pond's doing well still to this day. And it was just this, it was a new pond thing and I helped her through it. And now it's because we had to get some big fish. So that's a funny story. And that's gonna lead me to the question of the day that I have for you. I wanna know about your pond algae horror stories and what you did to solve your problem. I hope you didn't use algicide, and I hope if you are using algicide, you put a stop to it right now, and let's figure out what you need to do to stop putting the death in your pond. If you want me to answer your question here on the show, you know how to do it, hashtag AskThePondDigger. Put it out there on social media, blast it around. I'll do my very best to find it, and I'll try and answer it for you right here on the show. Until next time, I'm Eric Triplett, The Pond Digger, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.